Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 3, Text 26, Translation and Commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Avatara Hiya Sankhya Hare Sattva Nidhe Dvijaha Yatha Vidasina Kulya Sarasasyu Sahasrashaha O Brahmanas, the incarnations of the Lord are innumerable like rivulets flowing from inexhaustible sources of water. Want to leave that right in the center of the room? It would be better in the, on the side, isn't it? O Brahmanas, the incarnations of the Lord are innumerable like rivulets flowing from inexhaustible sources of water. Purport, the list of incarnations of the personality of Godhead given herein is not complete. It is only a partial view of all the incarnations. There are many others such as Sri Hayagriva, Hari, Hamsa, Krishnagarbha, Vibhu, Sudhama, Yogeshwara, Brihad, Bhanu, and others of the bygone ages. Sri Prahlad Maharaj said in his prayer, My Lord, you are manifest as many incarnations you manifest as many incarnations as there are species of life, namely the aquatics, the vegetables, the reptiles, the birds, the beasts, the men, the demigods, etc., just for the maintenance of the faithful and the annihilation of the unfaithful. You advent yourself in this way in accordance with the necessity of the different yugas. In the Kali Yuga you have incarnated God as a devotee. This incarnation of the Lord in the Kali Yuga is Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There are many other places, both in the Bhagavatam and in other scriptures, in which the incarnations of the Lord, as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, is explicitly mentioned. In the Brahma Sanghita, also, it is said indirectly that although there are many incarnations of the Lord, such as Rama, Nursingha, Varaha, Matsya, Kurma, and many others, the Lord Himself sometimes incarnates in person. Lord Krishna and Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are not therefore incarnations, but the original source of all other incarnations. This will be clearly explained in the next shloka. So the Lord is the inexhaustible source for innumerable incarnations which are not always mentioned. But such incarnations are distinguished by specific extraordinary feats which are impossible to be performed by any living being. That is the general test to identify an incarnation of the Lord directly and indirectly powered. Some incarnations mentioned above are almost plenary portions. For instance, the Kumaras are empowered with transcendental knowledge. Sri Narada is empowered with devotional service. Maharaj Prithu is an empowered incarnation with executive function. The Matsya incarnation is directly a plenary portion. So the innumerable incarnations of the Lord are manifest all over the universe is constantly without cessation as water flows constantly from waterfalls. The topic is the incarnations of the Lord. And Particularly, it's mentioned here that avatara hi asankhya, that the incarnations are innumerable, asankhya, impossible to count. This does not, however, mean that anyone and everyone who is imagined to be an incarnation is an incarnation of the Lord. Actually, this word incarnation, avatar is a better word. Even in English, that word is understood now. Or not misunderstood, it's misunderstood. It's entered the English language. Avatar is misunderstood to mean all these bogus people, practically. But avatar, that, that is a more precise word that means who has come from above who descends whereas incarnation means it literally if we see the etymological root it means one who has accepted a body so in one sense even the jivas can be called Expansions of the they are expansions of the Lord, Vibhinamsha. But the avatars particularly refers to Swamsha, those who are the direct personal parts and parcels of the Supreme Lord. They are called Swamsha. 
and vibhinna, different angsha. Amaya vangsho, jiva loke, the jivas, Krishna declares in Bhagavad Gita that the jivas are also his angshas. But they, that is defined in Varaha Purana. There's difference between Shwangsha and Vibhinangsha. Swa means own. Own path directly the Lord Himself. And Vibhinangsha means separate. So the avatar, they are the Supreme Lord. Or those who are then also some special jivas. They are also called avatar because they descend from the spiritual world to the material world with a special function to perform on behalf of the Lord. They are general. They may be Shaktya Vesha avatar. As some examples are given here, the four Kumaras, they are, they are empowered with transcendental knowledge. Jnana Shakti Sanchara. Narad Dev is he has the Bhakti Shakti, Pitu Maharaj, Palan Shakti. They are called Shakti Veshavata because they, in a particular function, they act in the same way as the Supreme Lord. And Avatar because they come from the, the sent by the Lord from the spiritual world specifically for that purpose to execute a particular mission on behalf of the Lord. So Prithu Maharaj, for instance, an example is given here, called Shakti Aveshavata, is a representative of the Supreme Lord for this administration of the earth planet. Narada Dev is a representative of the Lord for preaching and establishing bhakti. Any great devotee who is specifically empowered to preach Krishna consciousness is understood to be Shaktyadri Shavata. Ali Kale Dharma Krishna Nama Shankitan Krishna Shakti Bina Nahe Tapravartan. In this Kali Yuga, the Yuga Dharma, the religious process for the age, is chanting the names of Krishna. But only one who is specifically power, empowered by the Lord can establish Krishna Nama Sankirtan in this world. So such persons are also considered Shakta Veshavata, not Purna Avata. Purna Avata means that they have the 60 qualities of Narayana. From them, innumerable universes emanate. That is not a quality of the Shakta and Shakta. Others, others who are not Purna avatar, also Manu. There are six kinds of avatars which are not Chaitanya's mentioned. Who can say? I already said. Manvantara. Huh? Manvantara. I just said Manvantara avatar is one. Guna avatar. Yuga avatar. Leela avatar. What Shakti Avesh, I already said, and one more is Mahavishnu Kanada Purusha avatar. So these are the six kinds of avatars. Among them, the Shakti Avesh avatar is generally a jiva who is Shakti Abhishta, who is empowered with a particular function for a particular function then Mangand avatar is also generally not Vishnu directly. and among the Guna avatars that Vishnu he is Vishnu he is Vishnu Tattva. Lord Shiva is in his own category he's uh, Shiva Tattva somewhere in between Vishnu and the Jiva not an ordinary Jiva but not Vishnu and Brahma is generally Jiva Tattva, but he's also Guna. So this uh, knowledge of the different avatars, this requires to be preached in human society. 
Otherwise, what's going on? There are so many so-called incarnations of God. Because of lack of Bhagavat Tattva Vigyana, as is the stated function of this Srimad Bhagavatam, to give Bhagavat Tattva Vigyana, scientific knowledge of the of God, we can say. Of the uh, Actually, these words are not very easy to translate. You can't properly translate it in English. Bhagavad Tattva means the subject matter of God. His, what is the Bhagavata of Bhagavan? What, what is it that makes him God? He's called Bhagavan. But who can be called Bhagavan? They have to possess Bhagavata or the qualities that are distinguished, the, the, the lakshanams, the characteristics that that belong to God. If they don't have them, they, then they are they are not God. They are not Bhagavan. So this subject requires to be understood. All these words need to be defined clearly. Uh, otherwise, uh, if it's not defined clearly, then everything will remain unclear. And when unclear means no proper knowledge, means again. It means we're still in the conditioned state. That's why so many people may say we are worshipping Krishna. But that doesn't mean that they're pure devotees or they're, they're, they're going to Krishna or even that they are worshipping Krishna, even if they say they are. Because they don't have a clear understanding who is Krishna or what is the meaning of worship. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught knowledge of Krishna beginning with Sambandhagya and Abhideya. Prayoja. So all these three all these three are interlinked. What is our sambandha according to our understanding of our relationship with this? Then uh, we can then we get a, an idea of what is the prayojan. But even the the prayojan, what is the ultimate goal? And that is uh, anyway, let's go back to that. We, understanding that we're servants, then the prayojan means to serve Krishna in the best possible way. And that also sets the abhideya, the, the process of devotional service. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he taught what is actually prayojan, our sambandha, Krishna Nitya Das. And he defined prem prayojan, prem apumartha maha, love of Krishna, is the uh, ultimate necessity of the jiva. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he taught Prem Parakashta, the, the topmost level of love of Krishna. When we talk of service, generally we have the concept of service means there is a, one who is superior and there is one who is inferior, and that is service. But there's another kind of service also. There's a service which is performed out of love, not for payment or not out of force or not, out, not only out of respect, but out of love. Just like the, the wife serves the husband, the husband also serves the wife. Of course, in this material world, there's no actual love, but this is a... This is Chandra Shaka Nyan. This is giving an example by which we can understand something which is beyond our present ken of understanding, grasp of understanding. So this uh, the wife serves the husband, the husband serves the wife because not out of force, that may be in, in some cases. Ideally, out of a sense of affection. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught love beyond surrender. That service, yes, but even beyond surrender, yes. Kinkar, that, that word kinkar, I mean, that's one, there are so many words for servant. Sevak, Bhritya, 
Kinkar, Das, Kinkar is a word, Kinkar. What, what shall I do? It means personal attendant, you serve. But higher level is to do what Krishna wants, to understand what he wants, without asking. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught this, how the, the especially the Vrajavasis, they're in so much uh, depth, their, their, their mood of service is so deep, that they know what Krishna wants, and they act in such a way. And it may appear that in their dealings that they sometimes act in a way that is not pleasing to Krishna. But those who can understand, understand that it's all very pleasing to Krishna. Vishwanath Chakravar Thakur gave the example in relationship with Bhishma Dev shooting arrows at Krishna. And Bhishma Dev is one of the Mahajans. The Mahajan, they all teach that we should serve Krishna. So how is Bhishma Dev serving Krishna by shooting arrows? Actually shooting at Arjuna, but we find many times they you'll find in the descriptions of the fighting they shoot the chariot driver anyway and even if they don't specifically shoot him then he's likely to get in the way of a few arrows also so Bhishma Dev was shooting Krishna doesn't seem to be like the proper thing for a servant to do but uh, Vishwara Chakravar Thakur who is certainly a, a Rasa Acharya one who teaches philosophy but brings out the especially is well known for bringing out the, the intimate rasas of pastimes of Krishna. He states that because Bhishma Dev was shooting Krishna in, in love, there's actually an activity of love, there's viraras, chivalry, that's translated in English, viraras, so some, some fight with Krishna out of a sense of love because they know he enjoys it. That's different from the demons fighting with Krishna, like Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyaksha. But they, they fight in a kind of spotting mood. Even Bhishma Devi is fighting with Arjuna, he had so much love for Arjuna. But uh, in the, the spotting mood, the spot, even in the spotting mood, there may be a sense of uh, the, wanting to defeat him. Sometimes the, the Gona Ras or the subsidiary Ras that, that may temporarily appear to overshadow the Mukhyaras. The Mukhyaras means the, the Shanta Dasya Sakya Vatsalya Madhu. These are the these Mukhyaras. So but it may be that temporarily the, the Gona Ras or the subsidiary Ras may temporarily overcome the uh, the Stai <coughs> So in the in fighting, it be, fighting means you don't do uh, with awe and reverence. <laughs> There's no awe and reverence in fighting. No one, at least you might have awe and reverence for the commander of your army, but not for the. Even some awe and reverence may be there, but then in the heat, of, just like Arjun had great respect for the. Uh, for his guru, that was why he didn't want to fight. Guru Nahatma hi Mahanava Bhuktam Bhut fight What is that? A Pihalo. I mean, it's not right to fight with our guru, he was saying. To. But uh, he respected them. He was going to fight with them. Before the battle started, he shot arrows just at the feet of Jona Acharya, Kripa, Bhishma. Shalya, all the person to show respect to them, just accurately to put just at their feet. But then in the heat of battle, that respect is going to go away. Otherwise, if you are standing like this, you're not going to be able to fight. So, uh, Bhishma was angrily trying to kill Arjuna. And Krishna was there also. He knew that he said, I will fight so severely that Krishna will have to come and attack me. So he was, he was not fighting. He withdrew any, as, as Duryodhana had suggested. Uh, Bhishma wasn't fighting to his fullest extent because of a sense of partiality towards the Pandavas. 
So then Bhishma lost all. He, he became one. So angry. And fought. So his Viraras, that overshadowed his, his sense of reverence for Krishna. His attitude towards Krishna was, we can say, predominated by Vatsa. Uh, he considered Krishna, he's my junior nephew, like this. <coughs> so, but in the, uh, in the battle, he was shooting Krishna. So, Vishwana Chakvar Thakur explained that, this is just like in love, the one in the act of sexual love, the one partner may bite another, which is painful, but it's taken as pleasing. So that was Vishwanath Chakvartis. Uh, he explained like that. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu revealed Praja Bhakti, which is very difficult to understand, especially at its higher levels. Therefore we find here Madhvacharya, he practically rejected, not rejected, but he didn't want to comment because it was beyond the level that he taught. He taught, mostly the Acharyas, they teach Dasiras and Sakiras half. And there are two divisions in Sakiras. This <coughs> Gaurav, Sagaurav, Sakiras, with awe and reverence. And that means that friendly to the Lord, but never forgetting his superior position. Just like the friends of Krishna in Dwaraka. They're friendly like Uddhav. He becomes, he almost comes up to the Vishramba. Sakyaras. Arjun, when when he saw Krishna's universal form, and he, he became his. He, generally, the Mayavadis they like to promote this uh, this Vishnu Darshan as the most important part of Bhagavad Gita. But Prabhupada explained that when Arjun saw the Vishnu, he became filled with awe and reverence, and he actually came down. His level of understanding of Krishna actually came down because when he understood Krishna's greatness, his intimacy became reduced and he start, started addressing him as Hey Krishna. No, no, he didn't. That was before he was addressing Hey Krishna, Hey Yadiva, Hey Saketi, oh my friend. Sometimes I used to insult you and call you Yada. You see, We're, we are the Kurus, we are the Pandavas, and you're, you're just a Yada. So sometimes insulting. Insulting as friends will insult. This is Vishramba Sakiras. Vishramba Sakiras means there's no feeling of awe and reverence, but sometimes in friendship you may uh, fight with a friend or you may playfully ins insult him like this. So Arjuna actually came down, Prabhupada explained. His, his appreciation of Krishna became filled with appreciation of his opulence and his and, and, and then his intimacy with Krishna became reduced. So for real intimacy then uh, one should be able to one who, on, only one who is very intimate he can for instance chastise the Lord. Who can chastise? One either one who is not friendly or one who is friendly. Either either our well wisher or our or our enemy or bad wisher, you could say. So the uh, those there may be devotees of Krishna, but they don't understand Vraja Bhakti because they cannot imagine how anyone can chastise Krishna. They cannot imagine how anyone can climb on the shoulders of Krishna without being an offender, and therefore they discount. Raja Bhakti. Well, they may comment on it, but uh, but they, they leave out the the essential portion. Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is the 
essence, we're talking about incarnations, essence of all incarnations. Avatara sa Chaitanya Avatar. Here we have the word, we're using the words Swamsha. So Krishna is or avatar. So Krishna is Swangshi or Avatari, the source of all incarnations. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is also non different from Krishna. Non different, but even more because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Radha and Krishna combined. They are non different, Radha and Krishna, but they're not together. Radha, Krishna, Pranaya, Vikriti, Hiladini, Shakti, Rasman. Ekatmana api bhuvi pura deha bhedam kato to chaitanya akyam prakata yad prakata yad adhuna tadvayam aikya rupa radha bhava duty subalitam nomi krishna surupa radha and krishna are one but they their, their exchanges are on the platform of transcendental love and for this they are eternally separated but they have come together again as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Radha and Krishna combined so when Radha and Krishna come together then because Radha is stronger than Krishna her bhav is stronger than Krishna which is why Krishna came as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he wanted to understand what is Radha's love for me I'm missing out so Radha Bhav, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna with Radha Bhav. So mostly he forgets he's Krishna because Radha Bhav is stronger than Bhagavad Bhav or Krishna. And duty and the, the, the he becomes black, a Krishna. Krishna Bhav and Twisha Krishna, his Twisha, his bodily effulgence is non, not black, not that of Krishna. So it's golden, golden avatar. Goranga, Gorasanda, who is Shamasanda has become Gorasanda. So he is Krishna, the avatar asa, is the essence of all incarnations. Now, mostly people don't think he's incarnation because incarnation they expect to do something like they expect him to do something like assuming the form of a giant fish and swimming in the ocean of devastation, saving the Vedas, or assuming the form of a giant boar and lifting up the earth or killing all the Kshatriyas. Because people think God must be great. So they measure in terms of what they consider to be great, physical strength or something like this. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's greatness is not demonstrated by that. As most of the people in India think he's a, he's a devotee. Just he's, he's another devotee. Then at that time there were so many devotees. There was Mira, Kabir, and they're all so many in common. So many misconceptions. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's greatness lies in his love and how he has distributed that. This is his greatness. That the greatness to kill the Kshatriyas, Parashura, Shaktya or greatness to lift the earth. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's greatness, more, greater feat than lifting the earth, is lifting up the fallen Jivas. It's more. Especially so why all the avatars that their business is Pritranaya Sadunam Vinashaya Tajushkritam Dharma Samstapanata Sambhavami Yuge Yuge Crushing the atheists, uplifting the devotees, and re establishing the principles of religion. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has done that in the most extraordinary manner. He has given love of Krishna to a degree which even the, the previous acharyas who were themselves so powerful they, they did not even they hardly began to con, to conceive of Ramanuja, Vallabh to some extent Nimbarka some, to some extent 
seen what is this? That uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, this is described in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita that the Krishna came and he brought the Prema Bhanda, the storehouse of love, but it remained locked. He didn't distribute it. Why do? But Chaitanya, the Panchatattva, they came and distributed this very widely. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's greatness lies not in extraordinary physical feats. Although there were some such things also. What we would call miracles, just like in his childhood one scene. He slapped his mother and she pretended to faint. And then the local women were told, if you bring a coconut, then only she can be revived. So he went out and immediately came back with a coconut. And they were astonished. How is this possible? Even Bhaktisiddhan Sasar Thakur explained that at that time, there were no coconuts growing in that area. So coconuts were not a common thing. Or say coconuts, they'll grow in the coastal regions. Isn't it? Here you have so many coconuts. In the, the further you go in land, isn't it? You won't see coconuts. So, so Mayapur is quite inland. But this turns out sort of explained. That time there were no coconuts. And that area is an uncommon thing. But he brought. So he explained that this was not a coconut of this material world, it was a coconut of the spiritual world. So like this, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he performed some such feats. One time they were, they were about to do their Sankirtan in the evening, they would begin Sankirtan in the evening. Uh, and so many clouds assembled in the dark sky and the rumbling thunder looked like there was about to be a great storm. So. Mahaprabhu look, looked up at the clouds, clapped his hands, and they all cleared away, and they had nice sankirtan. So uh, these, in some ways, he showed his Bhagavata, as people expect, but it's in a manner which is inconceivable to the jiva, to the conditioned soul, because the conditioned soul, he measures everything in terms of uh, physical. So when the Lord appears to do some physically impossible feats, then they become, uh, they become surprised. Oh, this is something wonderful. That you see this Sai Baba, he does some tricks and they think, oh, he must be God. Because of lack of knowledge of what is, what is the Bhagavata of Bhagavan? What is, the, what, what is that which makes him God? But uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is avatar sa essence of all incarnations, because the, the actual uh, work of the avatar, he comes down to lift us up. He doesn't come down and become one of us. He comes down and goes back. And when he comes, goes back and he brings back so many with him. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu more than others. He came from a higher place and he takes others back to a higher place. To Kalopindana. Higher means higher in love of Krishna. So, there's so much misunderstanding about what is the meaning of the word Bhagavan, Avatar. And people don't know about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu practically. Even if they know, they misunderstand. And here in Udupi, they have very deep misconceptions, actually. So, it's not a very easy job, but here in Udupi, our task should be to establish avatar sa chaitanya avatar that will be the victory in Udupi establishing that chaitanya, what chaitanya mahaprabhu has come to bring that madhva he did he was a servant of chaitanya mahaprabhu in that he he laid the path he, he, he helped prepare the path otherwise the influence even ramanuja had come made such great contribution, which Madhva didn't at least openly respect. Rather, he, he considered Ramanuja to be almost as bad as Shankaracharya. Shankaracharya. But Madhva that uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu particularly accepted, he appreciated his total rejection of Mayava. This he appreciated. Of course, he so totally rejected Mayava that his the Dvaitavadis won't accept this, but he, his Dvaitavad was also so much Dvait, Shuddha Dvait. There's no, there's no, 
but then it means there he is talking what is the difference between especially between Jiva and Ishvara? Six kind of difference between Jiva and Ishvara, Jiva and Jara, Jara and Jara, Ji and Panchape, five kinds of differences. And Jiva and Jiva. So he analyzed indeed. But if there's so much there's no there should, there has to be some non difference also. Otherwise how can how can the jiva relate with Ishvara at all? If it's total, if they're absolutely in a different category, then how can there be any relationship? So he emphasized the difference to such an extent that uh, it's, it's very difficult for the, how the jiva can even relate to the Lord at all. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, philosophically also, that should be established. How Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's philosophy, that is the perfect harmonization of all the Vedanta teachings. Madhva also, he rejected Veda Vakya. Shankaracharya, he rejected Abheda Vakya. Or he, or he emphasized the Veda Vakya, the, the Shruti texts that emphasize a uh, difference of the jiva and the Lord. He didn't, Shankaracharya gave importance to Aham Brahmasmi, the Abheda Vakya. Aham Brahma, Tattvamasi, that's also Abheda Vakya, but he, Shankaracharya, actually Tattvamasi is Bheda Ved, if it's properly understood. All of them are, if it's, Aham Brahmasmi is also. But his interpretation gave only non-difference. Am tattvamasi. Ekadadutiyam. Ekadadutiyam. There's only one and no second. So he misunderstands that to mean that there's only one. And there's no... Everything is all one. But actually it means that he, the Supreme Lord, is one and he has no equal. <coughs> there's no one else on his stature. So Shankaracharya like this, he, he took what he considered to be uh, the, what he considered to be, he gave for what he called Mahavakya. He, he elevated them above others. And Chaitanya Mahārāja said, Onka, that is the Mahavakya. And, and Madhvacharya, he took the Bhedavakya and he minimized the Abhedavakya. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed the perfect harmonization that none of the Vedic mantras are to be minimized. They're all Brahma, they're all spiritual. So, and they're all meant for the under, they're all meant for the uh, elucidation of the absolute truth. Therefore, if we reject any of them, then we, we're not properly serving the, the Vedic mission. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed in this one how what Madhva he rejected Shankara, but in so doing he also rejected, to some extent rejected some of the message or didn't fully explain some of the message of the Vedas. So Raso Vaisaha Asayanghi Eva Adam Ladva Nanti Bhavata. It's ultimately the essence of Shruti is to understand the Supreme Lord as Rasaman. He is full of Ras. And we are also, is, is, we have a function to perform in service to Him. If we're so different, if we're totally different from Him, then how can the Lord derive any Ra? And, and what? And how is it possible that it's so different that we, we, we are only coming from Him? So there should be some semblance in that. This is basic logic that the, the effect should have some relationship with the cause. So, you can't say it very loudly around here, but Madhva's philosophy is also incomplete and defective. It was meant for a... It's, it's complete in, its, in one sense, but then if you see what Chaitanya Harpo has given, then you see that it, it hasn't come to the... It cannot fully explain. Rasa Saha, he is full of rasa. 
you know, to the extent that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given us. It's inconceivable. When you say that Chinta Beda, it's inconceivable to those, to the mothers, for instance. It's even uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught that which is Veda Atit, beyond the Vedas, which is not acceptable at all to Madhva. But the it's it's Veda that's showing the way. But ultimately this Gyan is not all in all, that is the Rasa is to be experienced. So these are all very subtle and complex topics. Ultimately it's beyond Vedavani or, or, or maybe not beyond but the, the, the pinnacle of understanding Vedavani is, is to go beyond understanding simply understanding intellectually as the Vedas themselves suggest and come to the platform of experience of the Supreme Law so this Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave that experience on the platform of Prem, which is the service, but to a degree that even Hanuman, who is famous as, this, as the topmost servant of the Lord, but even Hanuman himself admits that my service is far uh, outstripped. Uh, by, of course, every others, everyone will say that, but practically there is no uh, comparison to that which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, that uh, what is that? Araja Bhagavan Vrajesha Tanyas Tadhava Vrindavana Ramya Kachit Upasana Vrajabadhu Bhagena Yanka Vita. There is no comparison to the service of Krishna which is done by the Gopikas of Vrindavan, of whom the center is Radha, as she proved by leaving the Rasa dance, that she is that she is more dear to Krishna than all the rest of the group of gopis put together. So privately it's not possible to understand Krishna without understanding Radha. But it's so Radha is so dear and so close and, to Krishna and that love of Radha for Krishna is so on a level so inexplicable to the conditioned souls that we don't even talk about Radha very much because first we have to see how oh, Krishna is supreme. Get that understood, surrender to him, serve him. But ultimately the Bhagavatam, which doesn't even mention the name of Bhagavatam, the only indirect, is only meant for understanding Radha Krishna. But others couldn't reach Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed that. So it actually requires a, a high level of spiritual advancement to understand how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the most, he, he is the essence of whatever all the other incarnations came. To show the way towards, he established that. He fulfilled to a degree even more than Krishna. Yada yada hira, paritranaya sadhunam vinashya tadushrita, dharma samsthavana, sambhavami yuga yuga. So, this Bhagavata, we don't find Chaitanya Mahaprabhu directly, indirectly. This Channa Kalog Yada Bhavat is come in a covered form. So it's a very great topic. Many, many books could and should be written about this. I've written that small book about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to give people some idea. But actually, so much work is required. So many books should be written. Already, Chaitanya Charitamrita. That is the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Charitamrita Krishna S. Kaviraj Goswami says, I'm just writing briefly. He said, every, every moment that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is here on this earth, millions of books could be written about it. But I'm just giving some small idea. And that is also not a small book. So, so many millions of books need to be written establishing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Who is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? It shouldn't be taken in a sentimental way. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is if we try to take it in a sentimental way, then we'll get mixed up with the Jada Rasa or the materialistic so called Rasa. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has to be understood. Not, they mistake sentimental. He was crying and falling on the ground. Not 
sentiment, yes, but that bhav is radha bhava. So to understand that one has to go through millions of lifetimes of philosophical understanding. One who's gone through millions of lifetimes of trying to understand the Vedic knowledge, they can uh, maybe be blessed with the understanding by which they can begin to appreciate the greatness of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So it's not this Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's cult. It is not one uh, dancing and chanting, yes, but it's it's not just for foolish people who don't understand Vedanta. It's for, it's for people, it's only for those who properly understand Vedanta. Without properly understanding Vedanta, no one can understand Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So anyway, there's so much to be said about this, but that's all for now. This far today. Hare Krishna. Is there any question about this? So the Bhagavad Gita has a kind of father saying that uh, Krishna's position when he's explaining there's nobody greater than him. And also he says there's nobody lower than him. No one greater than Krishna? And no one is lower than Krishna. Everyone is lower than Krishna. Uh, I can show you that quote. Ah, uh, please, sure. No one is greater than Krishna, no one is lower than Krishna. That may be in Rasa Vichar, but in Tattva Vichar, everyone is lower than Krishna. No one is lower than Krishna. Well, Krishna says no one is superior to me. But then we have the term also in Upanishads, Asamurdhva. Asamur means no one is equal to him or no one is greater than him. Krishna is saying that there's nobody greater than Krishna. No one is equal to him, no one is greater than him. You're putting Harinam on your mouth. Please be careful. So in Tattva Vicha, everyone is lower than Krishna, except Radha or, or Nanda Maharaja. Even in Tattva in in, in uh, absolute uh, Tattva Vicha, then Nanda Maharaj is also lower than Krishna. But in Rasa Vicha, then. Krishna may be the same as everyone also. Tadva Vichar means philosophical consideration. You can, there's some advantage to being born in India. You can understand this. At least we can. It doesn't have to be translated. Tadva Vichar. It's easier to say it in. It's more meaningful to say it in the original. And rasa vicha means consideration of rasa, which is again not very translatable into English anyway. Which is more important, tattva vicha or rasa vicha? Mm, sorry? Which is more important, rasa vicha or tattva vicha? They're inseparable. If one has actual, if one has actual tattva gyan, then it must, then rasa gyan must be there. And rasa, rasa gyan cannot be. It, it, it cannot be without Tattva Gyan. If, if we say we, we only want Rasa, we only want to hear about the pastimes of Ratha and Krishna, but we don't want to hear about the Tattva, then uh, that's Sahajya, that's all. Then misunderstand. So we'll find Bhagavatam is Tattva Gyan and Rasa Gyan, both. The two are inseparable. Now, in the, in the case of the Rajavasis, their Tattva Gyan of Krishna as the Supreme Lord is covered over because their Rasa Gyan is so rich. They don't even consider it Gyan. Maybe they don't even know the word Rasa. So on, on, the, on the level of in, in Leela, then in the, especially in the highest Leela, then Rasa drowns Tattva Gyan. So in that sense, we could say ultimately rasa is the highest. Just say rasa o vaisaha. We don't say the ultimate tattva is rasa tattva. Rasa o vaisaha. We don't say there may be others also uh, statements that he is tattva. But just to be just to be it, we say Vishnu tattva. But you know, Vishnu tattva is only understandable through 
who is he? He's not just a not just a, a feature or a or, or a function, but he's ultimately he's full of love. But even that love, you see how Rupa Goswami has categorized that in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu and again in Ujjwala Nilaman, categorizing what are the different rasas, what are the divisions of those rasas, what are the expressions of those rasas, what are the stages within rasas, what are the stages leading to Prem, what are the, even when Prem is developed, what are the stages of Prem, so all this. Therefore, he is known as Rasa Acharya, Rupa Goswami. Hare Krishna.